Hey, this is Dan Putt, owner of Putts Ponds and Gardens. And today what I'd like to talk to you about is pond design error. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go take a look. In this backyard, beautiful backyard, right on a lake, built-in pool, we've got a really nice pond. So, believe it or not, this pond has got a huge design flaw to it. So, in that design flaw is the size of the pond is only roughly six foot across by eight foot. But if you'll notice, we've got an 18 foot long stream on this with an average width of three feet. So, if we do the math, 18 feet by three feet equals 54 square feet. What does that mean? Well, our pond is only 48 square feet. Six feet by eight feet, 48 square feet. Our pond is top heavy. When you have streams that exceed the square footage of your lower pond, what ends up happening is when you lose just a little bit in splash and evaporation um, in your pond, your water level goes down maybe about a quarter of an inch. What ends up happening is, and I'll demonstrate what the sound would be like, is just by closing that valve, you can see the water level in the skimmer is going down and going down and going down, down, down your pump will start starving for water. When it starves for water, your pump will start gurgling. We wanna make sure when we're designing a pond that the square footage up above in the streams and waterfalls does not exceed the square footage of the pond below. We can only pulse so much water through that skimmer per hour. And when we've got 54 square feet of water in motion that can attribute to X amount of gallons. Oh, gotta shut off the water. So if your pond is designed like this, that your square footage up above exceeds the square footage down below and you lose water from evaporation, your pond is gonna present itself as a leak. If your pond is designed like this, that your square footage up above exceeds the square footage down below and you lose water from evaporation, your pond is gonna present itself as a leak. It's not that you do have a leak, it's your pond just might be designed improperly. So, either A, make the pond bigger, which is no easy task, physically and on your budget, or shorten your stream. So, hope this helped. Understanding how simple design in a pond is very crucial. So if we've got a pond that's very small at the bottom, we want to take into account how much square footage we have up on top. Let's say for an example, this one here is a four by six pond. Well, that's 24 square feet. How long of a stream can we add on a 24 square foot pond. We can only add, if it's an average width of three feet, we can only add like maybe a five foot long stream. And this one well exceeds five feet. This one is approximately 10 to 12 foot long by three foot wide. So 10 by three, that's 30 square feet. We're six square feet over what the pond can handle. When you only have a skimmer with a six inch opening, it can only draw so much water into that skimmer before it stuck, starts sucking air. You lose a quarter inch of water from splash and evaporation. All these bubbles down here, those are, that's splash, that's evaporation. 
the rocks when they get hot during the day you're gonna have evaporation we want to keep as much of the same water in the system as possible because that way it gives a chance for beneficial bacteria to colonize and grow in your rocks and gravel in an ecosystem pond when we're always having to top off the water in an ecosystem pond it doesn't get a chance to balance itself out and when it does that we end up with green water and algae we really don't want that at all so do yourself a favor if you're designing ponds and water features make sure that the square footage up on top does not exceed the square footage down below you'll save yourself a lot of problems in the future i hope this video helps you to understand the principles when you're designing your water features if you have any comments leave them below thanks for watching our channel make it a great day